We don't know exactly when we're going to be able to buy autonomous cars, but we do know the opportunity is coming soon. The idea first appeared in the 1930s in a monthly sci-fi magazine called Air Wonder Stories, but it wasn't until the 1980s when Carnegie Mellon University's NavLab created the first self-sufficient and truly autonomous car. Bryce and I actually got to ride in one of NavLab's later public bus models in 1997, and trust me, having your bus driver stand up and walk to the back of the bus while you're tearing down the highway at 55 miles per hour is a surreal experience. Since those years, autonomous vehicles have come a long way, especially in the last 10 years. In 2008, the autonomous movement's biggest achievement came when a self-driving Volkswagen Passat was able to recognize a stop sign and apply the brakes on its own. Two years later, in 2010, Google had built an entire fleet of autonomous cars and clocked a total of 140,000 miles on Californian roads. Driving alongside other cars and pedestrians and obeying not just stop signs, but all traffic signals, including traffic lights. By 2012, that same fleet had covered 300,000 miles without a single accident. Google and VW aren't the only ones with their sights set on the self-driving market. Mercedes-Benz began testing autonomous driving in the 80s when NavLab was around and recently revealed their luxury F015 concept model, equipped with internet-connected displays that can be controlled via eye tracking and hand gestures. Last year, a BMW drove itself down the Autobahn, Audi sent an autonomous vehicle up Pikes Peak, and at the Tokyo Auto Show in November, Toyota unveiled its Prius Avos, which is an acronym for Automatic Vehicle Operation System, which can be summoned by the rider remotely. Now, despite some legal, safety, and privacy obstacles standing in the way of companies bringing self-driving cars to market today, you know, unknown questions like, can the system perform in a blizzard, or who is going to be legally responsible if the autonomous vehicle hits a pedestrian it didn't recognize? Automotive CEOs still think the autonomous car is inevitable as the technology advances. Google has said it wants its cars in the hands of consumers by 2017, and Tesla's Elon Musk wants passengers to, quote, get in, go to sleep and wake up at your destination by 2019. By 2020, GM, Mercedes-Benz, Audi, Nissan, BMW, and Renault all expect to have at least semi-autonomous vehicles available for purchase. Jaguar is expected to release one in 2024, and Ford plans to enter the market by 2025. If these predictions go as planned, the world is going to be in a much different place by the time 2030 is here. 1.2 million people die in auto-related accidents every year in the world. In the US, 40% of the deaths involved alcohol. Now, computers don't get drunk or mess with their cell phones or get distracted. So expect auto-related deaths to approach zero as more autonomous cars hit the road. Not only is it going to be safe, but it's going to be fast. The average American spends 52 minutes commuting to work today, but not for long. Say bye-bye to stoplights and traffic signals and say hello to high speeds. The autonomous car of the future will be able to plot a direct course and communicate with the other cars on the road so that as many as possible can fit and keep the flow moving as quickly as possible. Autonomous cars are going to be accessible to the disabled, elderly, and young, which raises an interesting question. If the autonomous car is no longer a car but a computer, then do we need to regulate it as much as we do with the cars today? Will you need a license to ride in one? I doubt it. Our environment is definitely going to thank us. More efficient driving means less energy is burned into our atmosphere, which means less carbon dioxide, which means cleaner lungs, healthier humans, and a longer lifespan for our planet. In disaster relief situations, hurricanes, fires, tsunamis, an army of autonomous vehicles could be ready for rescue missions. Finally, people are going to be happier. Stressful hour-long commutes shackle human joy. It is going to be nice to get rid of them. Thanks for watching. You can click on the screen to watch our rundown of the 10 fastest electric cars or watch Bryce discuss Google's push to have autonomous vehicles on the road by 2015 in California or our segment on talking cars or watch Bryce and I discuss the Mercedes-Benz driverless system. For The Daily Conversation, I'm Brendan Plank.